Hello, and welcome back to more Terraria with Brian. I have a bit of catching up with you guys, because I've played a bit off-camera, and so we have a number of things that we need to talk about and show off. At the end of the previous episode, somewhere along the line, we picked up an eye spring. And so, let me go ahead and show you what that does. It is my first pet! I guess some people consider the shadow orb a pet, that little light that follows me around. Speaking of, where's my shadow orb? There it is. Uh, but the eye spring is just like this little thing that hops around and follows you around, and as far as I can tell, that's all that it does. Uh, but that's interesting, I guess. I presume like a demon eye or a wandering eye or something, like dropped it as a rare drop, but I think I ended up missing that one on the screen, so I'm not entirely sure. But, let's see, we can go ahead and cancel it, uh, just like that. And another thing that I did... I went and improved, these things still are not optimal, but I went ahead and improved the slime farm, the way I'd set up the timers and the lava, and it turns out that even even in this kind of suboptimal thing that I've got going over here, we still get a lot of drops of gel and whatnot. So for example, you can see I just had that on for a few seconds, and if I were to hop down in here and grab that, 74 gel, you see just like that, and I'm not wearing a lava charm, and so I gotta be careful. And I'm carrying 876 years, all the gel, as well as all the slime banners uh, that I've gotten from killing slimes in the slime farm. But in addition to that, I also got this object called the Superior Slime Staff, which will summon a baby slime to fight for you. And so here's what it does. There's the little baby slime. He hops around with you. And it seems like this would be good to get early in the game. Late game, not so much. Uh, because, well, we'll see. Let me go find a guy to fight, and we'll see what this guy does or does not do when it comes to other bad guys. Okay, there he goes. He's sitting a corrupt slime for one hit point apiece. <laughs> and furthermore, when he's damaging enemies, sometimes the enemies have, like, an invincibility timer just like you do. Uh, and so, as a result, if he has just hit the enemy, sometimes I cannot hit the enemy right after him. Uh, oops. Just got another shackle. I've got so many shackles. Um, and so, yeah, it ends up being a hindrance more than a help to have uh, that guy attacking enemies because when he's attacking them, sometimes I can't deal any damage because he's continually dealing one damage at a time. My shackle chest is finally completely filled. Uh, and so I might need to do something with that. I, I've got all kinds of vanity items and things that I really need to do things with. So these are a couple of rare drops that I just wanted to go ahead and show off. I'm probably going to put them away, because they're not that useful to us, per se. But the next thing we need to deal with is... Uh, we'll see off-camera, perhaps. I had another Blood Moon where we got more of the Ice Golems, and I finished out a set of Frost Armor that he drops as rare drops, and I just wanted to compare it to the Adamatite Armor that I'm wearing right now. So currently I have 49 defense. And the set bonus on this is a bunch of melee stuff. And so if I change this out with Frost Armor, I haven't done this yet to see what the set bonus is, or just to like see what the overall damage scores are. 46 defense, so it's almost as good as Adamantite for protection. Set bonus, melee and ranged attacks cause frost burn. Interesting. Looks kind of cool too. Let's go see what frost burn is. It sounds like something that'll be kind of like fire, with like continual damage, I'm guessing. Uh, only it's icy? Let's see. Oh, it said melee? Is that what it said? Hold on. Melee and ranged. Interesting. So I could even, I could like fire a repeater at somebody? Frostburn, yes! And let's hit that guy. Alright, he's already dead. But I saw this guy flying around and he's got frostburn is apparently what that is. That is slowly eating away at his life. And let's see if there's anyone else who can survive a melee attack. Yeah, that seems pretty useful, actually. And so someone pointed out... It's actually, I believe, a name you may recognize, just someone from the uh, Terraria Reddit forums. Uh, was talking about, like, hard mode strategies or whatever. And it seems like one thing that you can do is, rather than going for any of the new ores, things like adamantite. Uh, if you set up a place where you can farm that crazy frost golem uh, and get all of these rare drops from him, 
it seems like that could really set you up to then go ahead and fight the bosses and get hallowed uh, so that you can get the new pickaxes and kind of like skip right past all of the hard mode uh, ores, the cobalt, mithril, adamantite, or their corresponding palladium, uh, orichalcum, and titanium. I believe are all of the names of those ores. Uh, and so that's interesting. Okay, here's another thing. I am wearing the Angry Medicated Bandage, which was a combination of the Bezoar, Bezar, whatever it was, the thing that gave me immunity to, me to, me to poison, and a bandage that I got for immunity to bleeding, and I got that as a rare drop killing a werewolf during a blood moon. Uh, and I might have some footage of that. If I do, I'll edit it in here from when I was just doing some off-camera work. I was basically, I was trying to do some farming. I was trying to also just set up things like I put these heart statues on one-second timers and kind of spread them out. Once again, it's still suboptimal. It feels a little bit cheaty to get like too many hearts kind of like repeating out of these things during boss battles. Uh, but nevertheless, I could definitely continue to do better than I was doing in terms of how many hearts I was getting out of these things. And so I decided to wire it up a little bit better and so I could get more hearts. And while I was doing that kind of wiring, uh, not only did this blood moon come up where I ended up fighting things like more frost golems, frost golems, uh, but I also, I got attacked by the twins once again. I was completely unprepared for it, uh, but I ended up doing a bit better when I had uh, some of the better uh, hearts and damage kind of reduction stuff going on over here with the... With this, and I also, I mean, I've just got better accessories than the last time when I fought the twins as well. Um, and so, it seems like we're improving a little bit in that department, so I've got a little bit of footage of that fight. And I think perhaps that catches us up with most of what's going on off camera. Took me a bit of time, uh, but let me go ahead and get some inventory together and figure out what we're going to do today. I think I'm in the mood to do some more jungle exploration in the hopes of gaining some more life fruit since they'll help me out with everything in the future. So I will make a cut and bring you guys back in for anything interesting. Aha! There's a mature life fruit. Hello, life fruit. Yay! I've seen lots of immature ones as well, and so I don't think it's that they bloom at like a certain time of the day or anything like that. I think it's just kind of random. Oh wow, there's Plantera again. I am I didn't bring any buff potions along with me, so I'm not gonna try fighting him right now. I got another jungle rose too. I feel pretty. Um yeah, not gonna try fighting him right now. There is a whole lot of chlorophyte up there though that I wouldn't mind getting. So let's go ahead and grab that. And people have been saying that the chlorophyte just kind of like grows in the mud, and so whenever you harvest it, you should leave a block behind because it will continue to kind of grow and spread in the mud, and so I've been trying to do that uh, so that it will continue. It looks like another like pocket of it has started to pop up right over there. There's a bunch of comments that I've had in the previous videos. I've been recording these way ahead of time because I'm going away for some time around Thanksgiving and need videos ahead of time. But as a result, it means that I've been not able to respond to people's comments kind of <laughs> in a very timely manner. Uh, and so it has been the case overall that like I finally like set up the heart statues better at the mob arena that I have and yeah, there's been all kinds of different pieces of advice that I've ended up kind of like figuring out on my own anyway for the most part, but then I've seen comments and so uh, sorry that I haven't been able to give people the credit they deserve for some useful comments both on strategy as well as uh, finding out different things about life here in hard mode in Terraria, but that's the reason why. Hey, I got another life fruit! Hooray! And I also just happen to be right over here next to a beehive. And I can't remember, like, back when we first encountered the beehives, it seemed like there were some things that you can combine into with some late game drops for things related to bees that I've forgotten all about. And so perhaps, perhaps we should take a quick time out 
and do another bee boss battle. <laughs> bee boss battle. That's a lot of bees all together. Um, yeah, I think that might be fun to kind of like break things up. And so let me go ahead and grab this chlorophyte and then we will go summon a queen bee over there. All right, I prepared the arena. I expect that this battle will be pretty easy at my current level of gear and everything, but who knows? Let's go ahead and start with Poison Staff, perhaps, as a nice way to begin attacking the bee. Although, actually, I could use the sword as it kind of flies by. That could be good, too. All right, but up here, yeah, definitely, this is this is a good weapon. Oh, yeah, it's doing lots of damage, and we're dropping mana hearts, which is also good. Although, I suppose with wings, I could just, like, fly up and, like, swing my sword like that. That would also be a good way to do things. And let's see. Oh, yeah, we've already, like, killed it off half of its hit points. Okay, so Queen Bee is not going to be a hard battle uh, at the current state of affairs that I've got going, and so maybe I'll just use the sword to finish it off. And you'll notice I did, I ended up taking off the frost armor. I decided the adamantite armor was still a little bit better. Um, but yeah, if you got the frost armor earlier, that could totally work out in your favor. All right, this bee is almost dead. And so I think I'm gonna wait for it to fly in here just to make sure it doesn't die kind of like inside of the wall. Oops. Crazy bees, go away. There we go. Yay! Queen bee trophy, awesome. And the beekeeper, that was a sword, right? Yes. And more bee nades. Queen bee, bottled honey. All right. Maybe it was stuff, yeah, maybe it was with the hive material and the honey. I didn't bring any um, buckets, did I? To scoop up any honey. Oh, interesting. There's a glowing mushroom area over here that since we're in the jungle has kind of like spread a lot through the mud. Oh, interesting. We're getting into kind of a hollow jungle area over here. I saw a pearl stone block that I just picked up and now I'm starting to see a few more hollow enemies. One thing I notice is the jungle background here seems very kind of incomplete. The wall seems to be kind of like disappearing, and so I wonder if the hallow, in addition to changing blocks, changes the background as well. And so I wonder if that's going to make the jungle go away over time. Not sure what goes on there. I don't quite understand all of the spread mechanics. What kind of background is this? Is this just normal hallow cave down here? I guess so. Because we definitely- whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I've gotten into the All Hallow music. We're in a portion of the map that I've never explored before. So this could be fun. And this will also be an opportunity to gather a whole bunch more souls of light. Oh, we seem to be right on the border because when I went over here, the music changed back to just like normal music for a moment. Yeah, so now over here, I just have like underground cave music. So I guess the Hallow is just over to our left. Here's Plantera again. So it appears that Plantera is pretty common in the jungle. So whenever we want to fight him, fight him it's not going to be too hard. Well, not too hard to start the fight, that's what I meant to say. I'm sure the fight itself will be difficult. That has got to be a mimic, because that chest is not sitting fully on two blocks. And chests can't normally be like that. And so, let's go see what kind of rare drop we can get from this guy. There he is. Hello, Mimic. I see you. Tink, 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 tink. Oops. Tink, 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 tink. Dual hook. That's the... Ooh, and here's some fungi bulb. So I very briefly... And what is that? Uh... Amorma fungus? I didn't get a good read on its name. Neat. So I was aware that there were some new uh, mushroom enemies because the mushroom biome that's right by my house, during a blood moon, I saw one or two of these guys spawn once. Uh, but I haven't been around. All my NPCs are there, and so the NPCs prevent uh, monsters from spawning. And so, oh, I need to heal. Um, and so I haven't been around a glowing mushroom biome when there weren't NPCs around. What kind of, what kind of thing was that? I want to read your name. Mushy Ladybug? And so I haven't been around a glowing mushroom biome to see kind of like the new hard mode glowing mushroom enemies, and perhaps they have some rare drops as well. The dual hook. 
Uh, I guess actually, if I just use it, it has incredible range, but you can only have kind of like, you can have two out at a time, I think, but only one of them holds, unlike the Ivy Whip. And yeah, and so it's kind of, it's got some trade-offs associated with it compared to the Ivy Whip, and I think most people, uh, probably including me, although I've never had the dual hick before. There's a life fruit, there's a life fruit, hold on, time out. Life fruit. I need to pick it up so that I can eat it, and I need to sort through some inventory uh, because my inventory is getting a little full and cluttered. Quick stack, that'll help. Um, all right, I hear bad guys that scare me. Yeah, the dual hook. I'm not gonna use it right now, but that was cool to go ahead and get the drop. And let's see, what else was I saying? <laughs> It surprises me how much stuff goes on in this game. It's hard to keep up with everything. All right, I'm in very good danger of dying, so I'm gonna go ahead and magic mirror my way home because I'm holding 38 gold, which is a lot of money to potentially lose. <laughs> all right, but we picked up some more souls of light, so that's good. All right, let me sort through all this inventory. All right, let's ask the guide, since we just defeated another bee, about the hive block. So honey block, crispy honey block, stinger, hive, obsidian, and bottled honey. A bee nation summons the queen bee. I see, so that's just so if you want to get more boss summons against the queen bee. And that seems to be the only thing you use hive for. All right, that's not as interesting as I was thinking. I didn't realize how much the corruption was spreading over into the entrance to the jungle over here, but this used to be a nice big jungle lake and now it's all become corrupted. And so I definitely need to consider getting the Clantaminator in order to start spreading some purity around here, I think is what I need to do. And I think I'll have the money to do it possibly by the time I get back. I noticed that Plantera seems to be in the same location as last time I visited over in this direction. And so it seems like those things don't move. Uh, which is kind of a nice property. Makes it easier to go and find the boss you want to summon. But I'm headed back over to... Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> Let's heal. <laughs> oh, Tattered Bee Wing. Well, I've already got one of those, and that's how I made my wings that I'm wearing. But I guess I could make some more, potentially. Uh, I'm headed back over to the Beehive, because one of the things that I've seen in others' videos... Uh, in this case, I think it was Alex's video that I saw, is basically that you can make honey blocks by pouring water on honey. And so maybe I'll test it over here where there's a little bit less honey. Let's try it. Not sure the right way to do this. Let's try putting some water down right here. Okay, yes. And so I believe I've just made a couple of honey blocks. So I wanted to get them in my inventory. And then I think you can also pour lava like so, oops, on honey, in order to get a crispy honey block. And so I've got one of those in my inventory as well. And I just wanted to have those things in my inventory so that uh, I could experiment with them to see if they're materials for anything other than the bee summoning thing. But then I'm also gonna pick up some buckets of honey so that we could potentially uh, make some honey back at home uh, and replicate some liquids. All right, so Scott, the guide, tell me about honey blocks. Oh, nope, seems like it's only used for that. And crispy honey. Oh, crispy honey can be used to make crazy furniture made out of honey. That is so ridiculous. All right, well, that's interesting. We learned something. All right, I've got two platinum. Let's go ahead and grab that as well as at least one gold and go talk to the steampunker. Oi, what you got in your Jiminy Fluffer? <laughs> I don't know what that means. Contaminator to platinum is very expensive. However, that combined with green solution is 25 silver. I guess let's go ahead and buy four of those. And I just want to see how this works. And so, let's see. I guess I'll try 
for the first time. I'm just gonna try right over here next to my base. But basically, I think this gets rid of corruption and hallow, uh, and spreads purity is basically like the opposite of corruption and hallow, I think. And so I think basically I take the contaminator and I go, whoosh! Yeah, and that stuff turns green again. And so now this has become uncorrupted in this little area, and I just used one green solution. And so if I spent a whole lot more money, I could get a whole lot more green solution and use that in order to kind of uncorrupt a whole lot of places. I don't have much hallow in this world, at least not on the surface, and so I don't know that I'd want to unhallow any of it. Um, but that does cost a whole lot of money. And then even if I do that, uh, it's still going to spread back unless I end up doing some other things. So I'm going to have to think about it in the long term. But at least, at least we've kind of started down that road of being able to fix up our world, I guess you could say. I'm going to grab most of the rest of my money because so long as we're on a spending spree, <laughs> which it seems like we are, I'm going to talk to... Oops. I want to talk to the wizard, not the arms dealer. Because he has this item called a crystal ball that can be placed. And I've also seen that this has a special property. So let's go place the crystal ball. And I will show you the special property of the crystal ball. I'm going to place it over here next to the arena. And can I walk right over it and past it? Yes. So if I right click on the crystal ball, it gives me a buff. Clairvoyance. 10 minutes. Na magic powers are increased. And so it seems like if we're fighting a boss battle, I think that would increase my magic. Actually, I should have looked at that. Uh, I could have seen, like, how many things these things are hitting for. 67 magic damage. I don't remember if it was 67 before or where we were at. I wonder if it'll show up just kind of as a bonus of our magic damage right there. All right, just to try out some of our new powers. Uh, yeah. It is just after nighttime, and so I'd like to try fighting Skeletron Prime again, this time on my own terms. And so I've re-equipped some accessories. I still got the B-Wings so we can fly around, but I've got increased magic damage, I've got immunity to knockback, I've got the invincibility thing going on, I will redo my magic power buff or whatever. I'll go ahead and get all these parts working in my favor. I'm going to double check that the nurse is correctly living in her house. And let's see if we can do any better at Skeletron Prime when I'm ready for him. All right, Skeletron Prime has awoken. So we will start by using all of my magic in order to fire at him with the poison staff because it's still a very good weapon. And I can just hold down the button because I've learned how the weapon works. <laughs> And then I can pick up lots of hearts, and so that is great. I can hit him with my sword. Let's try. I'm not sure how these light discs will do against him. Oh, they actually hit pretty fast. And so that's a nice weapon that doesn't cost any magic or anything that I could use. But at this point, I see that my mana has gone back up a fair bit. And so let's switch back to the poison staff. Uh, if I don't fly around, I took off my boots, and so I'm not moving very fast to kite him. Uh, and so it seems like that could be an important thing to keep in mind. Let's go ahead and hit him with a bunch of these things again. I forgot to take any potions, darn it. <laughs> I'm not using even like an iron skin potion or a pumpkin pie or any of the simplest things. But I think with all of my hearts that I'm generating over here, we'll do a whole lot better. And let's see, yeah, I've already knocked him down a few thousand hit points. Uh, and so I think I have a much better shot at the fight nowadays. All right. But, let's try to fly around, let's try to keep it moving. Alright, and let's use the light discs while my magic recharges to kind of hit him at range. Fly around over here, there we go, get you over there, now I'll go grab some hearts. And let's go back to Poison Staff, woohoo! And how many hit points do you have at this point? You have... 19,000 it seems like? And... Can I see where the moon is if I move around? Oops, I should really... Let's get some kind of weapon on the bar so that I'm doing some kind of damage as I'm flying around. Hi, Skeletron. How you doing? All right, unfortunately, with the glowing mushroom biome around here, it kind of cancels out the moon, uh, and so it's hard to see the time of day. It looks like we're only like a third of the way through the night. All right, I'm doing a fair amount of damage. Let's switch back to the poison staff since I've got some magic. 
And let's hit you in some of your various limbs. And let's also hit you with the sword, because the sword is fun. And let's go ahead and hit you with this real quick. Alright, and now let's go back to the light discs and fly around and try to hit you repeatedly with crazy boomerangs. 17,000. I'm still not doing damage all that quickly. Uh, I'm a little worried that we're going to run out of time in this battle again, which has been my problem in the past. Uh, my clairvoyance is definitely still running. If I just hit you with the sword and do some melee damage, is that like one of the best ways to do quick damage to you? 15,000? Alright. And then some people, someone said that like he gets weakened. Um, if, uh, oh, and I have, I forget, I keep forgetting that I have, I didn't use like an archery potion or anything. Um, yeah, that's not as good as the sword, basically, the light discs. Um, I have the, uh, repeater thingy, uh, and so I could use that to fire arrows at him as well. Let's go ahead and heal, um, but it seems like tanking him with melee damage is possibly the thing that's doing the most damage to him. Uh, he's down to 12,000 now, so that's good. And so maybe I'll try to do that. I need to make sure I visit the nurse if I need to at some point. Uh, but with all of our hearts coming back out of the heart statues, maybe I won't need to do that. And how are we doing? 11,000... Yeah, we're doing a lot of damage, so that's really good. Alright, and at this point I do have all my mana back up, so let's go ahead and fire this at range for a minute. We'll try to get lots of hits on you if possible. Alright, that's good. And still doing fine on health. Let's try to fly back up at you, hit you with some melee damage. Grab some hearts on the ground over here. Alright. If you're not coming back, then I'm gonna switch to the poison staff. Just fire up in the air at you. Actually, let's see if I come down here. Will you, like, fly further down? Yeah, and then I can go and tank you with the sword for a little bit. And you were down to what? Uh, I didn't get a good look at how many hit points he has left. Uh, find my mouse cursor. There it is. 6,000. Yeah, we're going to be able to finish off this fight. This is good. We're doing well. And I can see one of his, the chainsaw arm, is about to disappear. Uh, it has gotten very low on its own kind of parts or whatever. Uh, and so I'm going to see possibly if I can also manage to kill that off. Okay, let's go tank him. Tank, 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 Whoa! He's doing a lot of damage to me, though. I think I did kill off one of his four arms. And, alright, let's go ahead and switch to this. And he's almost dead, so let's try to finish him off. 3,000. So much damage, so much damage, so much damage. 2,000. We are running low on time, so let's keep moving. There's a falling star that sadly did not fall on his head and kill him. Alright, and Skeletron, where'd you go? Come back here. Alright, let's fire up in the air at you. There we go. Now that I'm hitting you with range, all of a sudden you come back after me. Is that like part of the trick? You're moving a whole lot more lately, Skeletron. Come back down here. I demand that you fight me like a man. Alright, he's flown way up there. Come down here, dude. I'm down here. The fight is down here. There we go. Now I hit you with... Ah, oh, darn it. I'm gonna run out of time if I'm not careful. Tank, 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 He's almost dead. There we go. Oh, baby. Hallowed bars, greater healing potions. The rewards are good for killing Skeletron, but I'm really curious to see how much time I had left. Let's see, because I think night ends at 4.30 a.m. 3 a.m., yeah. I went through most of the night in order to win that fight. So I'm still... Oh! Souls of Fright. Definitely want those. Still struggling to beat this guy, although I forgot to get the pumpkin pie, I forgot to get the iron skin potion. If I'd had those things, that would have helped a bit as well, I expect. Alright, I can turn these back off. They were very helpful. Thank you, hard statues. So in terms of souls, I've got light, might, flight, night, and fright. And so I think the only other one I need are souls of sight, which come from killing the twins which has proven to be a very difficult enemy. But perhaps we'll try them at some point on a future night. <laughs> night. Oh my gosh, too many things that end in ite. 
I'm curious to talk to the Dryad, who I moved over here, to find out about status. 2% Hallow and 10% Corrupt. Alright, so there's definitely a whole lot of corruption spreading, and so it'd be good to earn some more money so that we can buy some more of that green purity solution and try to get rid of some of these huge corrupted areas that we've got at this point. Aha, I see a life fruit. It's down over here on the left. I see you trying to hide from me, life fruit. There's another Plantera. They're just everywhere. Aha, light fruit. Yay. I see more light fruit. Yay. Woohoo. There's another Plantera. They're just everywhere. I know it was a while ago, but it just occurred to me that when I bought the Clintaminator, I forgot to use the discount card. Dope! 